Yo, exams are over and I'm back to making videos. For the entire second year, I have been secretly camping on campus, trying not to get caught by the campus security. Kind of fun. I have also got a video on that. But anyways, this video is just a short update on my experience in NTU Computer Engineering. Starting with probability and statistic, definitely one of the most useful module. Thanks to that, I can apply the knowledge to the gacha games that I played. Take for example Genshin. The chances of getting 5 star is 0.6%, hard PT is at 90 poofs, and if you were to apply the cumulative geometric probability, on average you will have a 58.18% chance of hitting hard PT. It's not about you being lucky or not. It's just that given a large amount of attempt, 58% of the time you'll reach hard PT. That's not all, this mod also includes things like hypothesis testing, sampling, and many different types of distribution. It is a fun process when you can apply the things you learn in real life situation. 9 over 10. Next, we have algorithm designs and analysis. This is a crucial computer science module where we learn to count the number of operations in a for loop while loop recursive functions and write them down as big O notations. We start off by analyzing sorting algorithms to graph to dynamic programming algorithms. This module is very well designed. We can see the effort the professors and lecturers put into the algorithm animations. I can't really show these slides, but these are some YouTube's video with very similar ideas. Okay, you see this man over here? His name is Abdul Bari. Very famous on YouTube for teaching programming tutorials. Yeah, shout out to Abdul Bari. Without his help, I wouldn't have understand any of those algorithms. But anyways, for this module, 8 over 10. Okay, OOP, Object Oriented Programming. Just like how many schools and YouTube tutorials teaches OOP, we use Java and C++ to learn about the four concepts of OOP which is abstraction, inheritance, encapsulation, and polymorphism. It is a pretty fun module until they hit us with the solid design principles. It is pretty hard to apply those concepts at first, but after you understand how it makes your code more robust, reusable, and extendable, it's kinda useful. So overall, this module touches the surface of OOP, 7 over 10. Digital System Design Imagine a bell curve. On one hand, we have people who write smart and unreadable code. And on the other hand, we have people who write long but readable code. And on the extreme outlier end, we have people who write code in assembly and binary. Well, in this module, that's what we do. We were taught to code on very long, programming the FPGA, and pipelining to optimize circuits, writing instruction in assembly language. This is a rather complicated mod, 5 over 10. Sensor, Interfacing, and Digital Control A very fun module, you get to experience how sensors collect real-life data, converting from analog to digital signal, applying low-pass, high-pass, and many different kinds of filters, understanding how motor encoding works by sending signal through a small hole, we can calculate the number of revolutions and the angle, we also have things like control theory where we learn to apply Laplace transform, S and Z transform, stability, PID control, by writing code onto a microcontroller connected to an actuator like a stepper motor. A very useful module, I had my share of fun in the lab class, 7 over 10. Operating systems. Super content heavy, they cram almost every part of the OS textbook into just 13 weeks. But if you were to apply divide and conquer and break things down into small parts, it's easier to understand the topic. We have things like processors, thread, scheduling, race condition, deadlock, real-time OS, virtualization, memory organization, aging, virtual memory, file system, I.O. devices, this, and security. I suppose it is important to learn from a low-level perspective of a computer, but there's way too much things to memorize for this module. 8 over 10. Software engineering. After taking this mod, I finally understand those programming memes I see on Facebook and Reddit, like the agile software development, good practices in development, 
the Scrum Sprint Cycle working in a team, many different ways of coming out with the user test case like black and white box testing. And the most memorable part of all is that the process of creating a software is an iterative process with the client where you work round and round and round and round until the user test case is acceptable. Very applicable for the future, 10 over 10. Microprocessor system design, basically dealing with hardware. For this module, we were supposed to program a robot on the STM32, a microcontroller. By sending PWM to control the speed of the motor, a bump switch to trigger interrupts if it hits an obstacle, a reflectance sensor to track the line on the floor, an IR sensor to track the distance between obstacle, and a tachometer for the motor connected to the wheel to track the distance and the speed of the robot. We get to try out one of each sensors in the lab, and on the very last lab, we have a final test using all the sensors. A very fun module, nothing too complicated to understand, 9 over 10. Computer Network The first half of this module remind me of why I hate university education. All theory, no application. We start off at the lowest part of the 7 layer, which is the physical and data link layer. We calculate things like the probability of connection breaking off, the flow control, collision detection, and avoidance. I'm not sure if I can apply this anywhere, but yeah, it's just good to know. The second half is much more interesting. Going into the network and transport layer, we learn about IP addresses, try coding out our own UDP and TCP client to retrieve code of the day from the server, try out packet sniffing, and analyzing data traffic. Although the second half is pretty good, but I still think there's still room for improvement. 5 over 10. And yeah, that's all I got to share. That's about it. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, bye.